Hello everyone, and welcome. We are, oh, I got a black screen there, it looks like it's all resolved now, we've got uh, everything all set. How's it going today, folks? Um, as always, I am your host, Luke, I am the community manager here, and welcome to the live stream for Fantasy Flight Interactive's The Lord of the Rings Living Card Game. Um, today's a little bit of a special episode, uh, thank you for joining us, everyone who joined us last week. We, um... We uh, had Tim on, he answered a couple of questions, dropped some information, um, so it's good to see everybody in the chat, see Stana, see you there, engage, Lalzer, it's nice to see you guys again today, uh, on this lovely Tuesday. Um, yeah, so last week we, uh, we resolved a couple of questions that some people had, we talked a little bit with Tim, um, we didn't get to see a lot of gameplay, uh, but that's going to change today. Today we are going to be focused entirely on gameplay, actually. Um, as we are going to be revealing a new hero card, as well as some of the uh, cards that are going to come within that uh, that hero cards pack. I'm going to turn down my mic a little bit here because I'm getting some feedback. That's a little bit better. Um, yes, we are going to be taking a look at uh, some new cards today. Uh, we're very excited for that. So yeah, uh, before without any further ado, let's just jump right in. So the hero today that we're going to be uh, we're going to be revealing is a tactics hero. Um, so he's going to allow you to play tactics card in your decks. If you play him with Gimli, the core set tactics hero, you're going to be able to play level two tactics cards, or you can uh, you can also just switch over and uh, convert your deck over to focus on him rather than uh, Gimli. Um, he's kind of got a low threat, low starting threat. Some people have already guessed who they who it is based on the uh, the posts we've had on social media and some of the other things we've revealed previously. So we're going to jump in and show him today here. Um, Lulzer, I am going to show a level 2 tactics card today. It's not going to be within the deck, but it is within the hero pack. So I'm going to uh, give you a quick look at that um, later in the deck builder. Um, we are going to be playing it next week, though. Excuse me, next stream on uh, Thursday. I'm going to be building a deck with the other uh, some of the other cards in that hero pack. So let's jump right in to the Tuesday stream deck. And you can see his art right there already. It's going to be Legolas that we're showing today, folks. We're going to show Legolas off. And uh, take a look at his ability. We're also going to try to complete quest 4. Um, it looks like some of those cards that we were having some trouble with have been fixed within the game now, so we should be able to make some progress. You're also going to see some uh, changes to the visuals that we've made, including some uh, clearer phasing and a couple of other little details. Um, we'll be able to talk about them. Hey, great company. Thanks for joining us. Um, see you there in chat right now. But uh, yeah, we are going to be making some other changes to the visuals. You'll see those today as well. So let's jump in. Got this chair in the frame over here and it's bugging me and I feel like if I push it it's going to make a very loud cl clattering sound so uh, we're just gonna leave it in there for now all right so I believe we've seen this all we've seen all this uh, this flavor text I don't think we've seen the last location in this quest yet if if I'm not mistaken I mean I know we haven't completed if that is the if that is the truth um, but hopefully we'll be completing it today. I was uh, I was getting through it pretty handily with this deck. This deck seems pretty powerful. Um, it's very mid rangey, just like the uh, the core set uh, the core set starter deck. But it's a little bit more fine tuned, and I think it's a little bit more directed in what it's doing. Um, so it seems pretty powerful. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so we've got to defeat the hill troll, and we can already see. Oh, and we've already got a uh, one of the new cards in our opening hand here, Tree People is going to be uh tree people is going to be an event that costs zero it returns a sylvan ally to your hand to play a random sylvan ally so that's going to be from the pool of cards that are available and there's actually quite a few um sylvan allies within the core set and within that hero pack that you're going to be able to select from but they all have one thing in common and that's that they have um very powerful uh, arrival effects so no matter what with this tree people you can kind of start cycling your uh cycling through your sylvans and start to uh, kind of get those little triggers and eventually you will snowball into a bigger advantage with that. Um, so it's quite a powerful card. Unfortunately we don't have any sylvan allies within our opening hand here, but I'm still going to keep the card in hopes that we'll draw one so that we can kind of show off how it's working. Yes, sylvan jumping is a mechanic that we are, uh, we are playing around with within the, um, within the digital version of the game because um, we thought it was a strong identity within the tabletop. As always, guys, everything that you see today and always on these streams is going to be work in progress. Um, so some things are going to change, some things aren't going to stay the same. You're going to see some bugs, you're going to see some uh, some oddities, some changes. Um, you know, just bear with us. Thank you for joining us and uh, thank you for giving uh, your feedback as always. So uh, we are going to jump in without further ado. 
So there's a Sylvan ally right on my uh, Galadorn Archer, which we've seen before. Um, and now we've popped up our favorite cards. So as we mentioned before on the previous stream, there's been some changes to favorite cards as well. They are not going to be monetized in any way. Instead, they're going to be on a seasonal basis. So you'll be able to add them to your deck. Um, and the cards that are available, we will start cycling through within the season. So let's see what we've got here. We can either hit in cash or we can Lorien's Wealth to draw some cards. I think I'm going to take Wealth, though there's a good um, there's a good argument for taking cash here since we have Gandalf in our opening hand. Excuse me. Um, but I think I'm just going to take Wealth because I like drawing cards. So let's do that. Okay. So you've seen some of the phasing as well. We've uh. We have did some updates to that, so you'll see when your quest begins, you'll see when the new phases pop up, there's some text as well. We just wanted to make it clear to people what's going on. And uh, immediately Legolas' ability goes off, so we're going to read that card in just a second here. We'll deal one damage with his ability, and we'll take a look. So at 9 threat, he's got a very low starting threat for a powerful tactics hero. Um, 2 attack and 9 defense means that he's pretty good on uh, in combat, and 1 willpower means he can at least contribute to the quest a little bit. Um, but it's really his ability where he shines. So he's got ranged, so he's not going to take damage, uh, reciprocal damage, when he attacks a uh, exhausted enemy. Um, so that's already a pretty good start for him. So there's not a lot of heroes with the range that we've seen so far. I don't think we've seen any, in fact. Um, however, his upkeep ability is where he really shines. He can deal one damage on upkeep. Um, so it's kind of like the inverse of Arwen, right? So he's going to be able to... Uh, He's going to be able to deal one damage at the beginning of each upkeep, kind of pick off enemies, so as long as there's something in play for him to deal damage, you're going to get value off of him. So basically, when you end up playing Legolas as your, um, as your tank or as your tactics hero, you end up kind of in a situation where you're playing the game a bit differently. You're trying to set all the numbers down to one so that you can get the most advantage at the start of a round. Um, it's really more about uh, attrition than anything else, and it's about setting up those triggers to make them, uh, make them deal the most damage and make them the most possibly effective. So he's actually pretty good when combined with Arwen because you see the inverse there. Um, on upkeep, you're going to be gaining these advantages, you're going to be playing with these numbers, and you can get a lot of uh, a lot of power out of it. Yeah, Legolas is one of my favorite hero cards. Um, that's kind of why I wanted to show him before any of the other ones. Um, we are going to be showing new heroes uh, probably on a weekly basis here, so uh, we are going to start having people vote on who they want to see on the Twitter polls. So if you're not following us on Twitter, make sure you join us on there so you can... Uh, get in on the conversation and uh, decide which heroes you're going to be showing next. But yeah, today it's Legolas and uh, couldn't be happier with him. So let's see what we can do here. Yeah, he's basically a lot of free damage, especially with the ranged. And when you combine him with other ranged allies too, you can uh, you can really build a deck around that. All right, let's see what we've got. I think... This hand is actually kind of weak. This is kind of an o a weak opening hand because there's a lot of stuff that we can do with it, but I don't know. It's like, as an opening, it's not fantastic. Well, let's tree people. Let's give it a shot. Now, this card was working when I uh, tried it, but this, uh, hopefully we will see if it's still working to in today's build. We will return our... Uh, our archer to hand oh it looks like maybe it's not oh, that's unfortunate because I really wanted to show it off um, we were having luck with it earlier oh it's because I placed the uh, trigger on it oh that's why so because I didn't resolve that trigger first that enter uh, trigger the game's going to crash on me here that's unfortunate well we'll jump back out and we'll uh, draw a new opening hand unfortunately here um yeah quad lore what did you want to know about favor cards what what specifically are you uh, curious about because I, I know the concept is a little bit uh, the concept is a little bit complicated right now. So if there's any questions specifically you have, I can answer them to the best of my abilities. Though I'm not sure how much new information I can really give you. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. The second I play the new card, um, but if you stack the triggers like that, sometimes the game still uh, has some trouble with it, which is uh, obviously something that's going to have to continue to iron out as we continue this game in progress. Um, so we see another new card, though, in this opening hand, Sylvan Tracker, which, again, is another Sylvan ally. Um, on arrival, it's going to grant a character stealth for the round. So it gives them stealth so that they cannot be attacked unless all the other characters are exhausted. Um, very powerful with Legolas specifically because of his ranged ability and because of his uh, one damage on upkeep. You can, you can really save him, hold him back, so that he can uh, deal damage to an exhausted enemy. Um, pretty powerful. Um, yes, so score is going to, uh, 
So on favor cards, yes, score uh, is going to be determined if you use a favor card or not. You will get more you will get more points if you do not use a favor card. Let's see, see, see. I'm going to keep sneak attack. I'm going to keep brown shield. I'm going to get rid of guard, and I'm going to get rid of tree people here. We'll keep the uh, Lorien's wealth plan here. Gain our three resources. They are going to be cycling through, so we're going to have new uh, favor cards available based on the season. Um, so that is like their effect is going to change. That's something that we're still ironing out the details on. Um, they are permanent. You are going to have access to them every time that you uh, that you jump into the game. Um, yeah. Let's put a shield on Arwen here. And let's save a resource so that we can ready up Aragorn. And... Uh, end our planning phase and jump into adventuring have him attack here patrol attack oh yes and we are losing um we've been playing around with this and we are still kind of talking about it eternally but um currently the way that we have the game set up is that uh characters lose guard um previously known as sentinel characters lose guard if they are exhausted um, we are still trying to determine whether or not this is a change that we like, but it's just something that we're currently playing around with. Um, not sure if you're going to end up seeing it in the final build, because here's here's a case where I would like to attack this exhausted uh, this exhausted guard, but I can't. Um, but yeah, that's a new dimension that we've been uh, we've been talking about, thinking about. So here we are. I'm gonna draw two cards with Lorien's wealth. And I think that that's going to be my adventuring phase here. New round. On upkeep, we will gain life and deal some damage. We will deal one to the sentinel enemy here. We will use Arwen to heal herself. So I'm going to play out a goblin sniper. And we will... The new hero is Legolas right here. We have not shown him yet. And I will gaining strength to get another resource here. Put another shield out on Legolas. Put out a guard of the citadel to protect our heroes. And we will end our phase there because I want to show you guys the new effect that we put onto Aragorn. Um, so previously you were double clicking in order to uh, reactivate him a second time. Um, we have allocated that ability to the power on the cards themselves. So this button isn't final, but the, basically the functionality that we wanted to get in here is that you're not going to be uh, double clicking. Instead, it's going to be more of a UI change. Um, something that's a little bit easier to parse for new users. So when you have a power action on a card, you'll be able to mouse over that card and actually click it there in order to use it. So Aragorn's going to come at the sniper there and take him down. And we still have to take down this troll. Hmm. We could feint and then attack with both here. I think I'm just going to attack with Legolas because uh, since he's ranged, he's not going to deal take damage back. Um, and we'll leave it there. We'll end our adventuring phase without activating Arwen because I don't really want her to take the three damage. We will heal up. Oh, we will deal damage first. We will Then we will heal up. Yeah, that's one of the fortunate things. So somebody mentioned um, using Legolas to activate Gimli, which is some tricky play. Um, but currently you cannot target your own heroes with that damage. Um, I think that overall it helps because of uh, moments like that with that Arwen. Um, you won't be able to uh, accidentally trigger there, uh, which I think is probably a good thing. Um, so even though that would be pretty cool being able to use Legolas to go Gimli into attacking, um, I think overall this is probably the better way to set it up. If I use the Archer to deal one to the Hill Troll, it'll go down to two, which means that um, either of my uh, heroes here can take it down. Arwen won't be able to. But if he attacks Arwen, then I can just pick him off with Legolas. So I think it actually probably makes sense to play the Archer here. So let's do that. 
Uh, upkeep is always at the beginning of a turn in our game. We'll deal the one to uh, the troll here. And we will... Oh, I could give Arwen stealth here. Let's see if it... Let's see how this goes. We'll give her stealth so that she can't be attacked. Using our new Sylvan Tracker. Our, our bright and shiny new Sylvan Tracker. And we will end the planning phase. And let's use Legolas. Well, let's attack with uh, Aragorn so that we can maximize our value off of uh, Legolas here. So there's the one. We can have the uh, archer take him down, though. Have Legolas take down the uh, the gold gold Dolgador orcs. Excuse me. And we'll have Aragorn. Uh, I mean, excuse me, Arwen quest towards the objective there too. Let's see. Let's see. And we can use our power to ready him up. I saw. I don't know if you saw me there double clicking because um, I'm used to the old version. But here we go. We've also updated the resource meters here on the sides to make them a little bit more legible. Um, the glow on it is a little bit bright right now, but I actually kind of like it. I think it's a little bit easier to read, so you can see we're still making those changes too. Let's heal up, uh, heal up Aragorn. Orc Hound, we're going to have to take this down because it gives all orcs pursuit, and it's got pursuit itself, so they'll follow us to the next location if we don't, uh, if we don't deal with them. Let's use the caregiver to heal up Aragorn here, who's looking a little bit... Uh, Looking a little damaged right now. And uh, that's going to be the end of our turn. I'm going to save this sneak attack for um, a turn when we can do a lot of damage. And let's have no Aragorn attack again. Finish it off with the archer. And then do some questing. So I should have probably attacked with Legolas there since he only has the one will power, but it actually doesn't matter since we have enough to uh, clear it off either way. And we can travel on to the next location. And we hit our travel button and move forward. Having defeated the troll, you board a raft and float down river. You barely had time to catch your breath before more enemies. Speaking of catching your breath, taking a drink out of my water there. Um, yeah, I also really enjoy the Legolas art that's featured in this game. I think it's a very good piece. Um, hopefully we'll be able to show you a little bit more of some of the uh, some of the new art too later when uh, we jump into the deck builder and take a look at some of the cards in his pack. On upkeep, we will draw our card and we will deal one damage. So this is actually kind of interesting because my instinct would be to put it on the... Uh, the enemy with the most health but if we drop the sniper down to one we can pick it off with either Arwen or um, or our archer I think I'm gonna end up putting it on uh, on our 3-5 here though let's heal up uh, heal up Aragorn this guy's nasty the ward riders we've showed him a couple times here um, they've got pursuit and uh, going to give each orc pursuit just like that orc hound because uh, presumably they're riding while well, they're riding a warg but they are riding their own uh, their own steed here um they're tough though and for five uh they're usually hard for sauron to play out but in this uh in this location he gets one on the initial staging area our objective is to make it down the river so we have to complete this objective here um to navigate the river we can travel from the location once we do and that's for eight willpower um, so it's going to take us some time, but fortunately there's not a ton of enemies on the uh, on the board right now. Let's see what we've got. We'll put a warrior sword out, and uh, we'll equip it onto Arwen. Um, because not being able to take down uh, two defense enemies has been problematic in the past with her. And then I think we're going to feint the warg rider here, just so we can all pile onto it and take it down. Um... I'm going to play the horseback archer as well, because since we'll get the first attack, we can... Oh, there goes Sauron's uh, triggered treachery card there. Ex uh, Pursued by Shadow is going to exhaust the next ally that enters play. I actually forgot that he had one up right now, um, including his one resource. If you'll notice, our our, uh, our threat level is only at 33, and we're on the second location. That's one of the benefits of this deck. Um, you start at 29, and that difference is... Uh, excuse me, preparation card, not treachery card for uh, Sauron. Anyway, um... One of the benefits of this deck is that since you're starting at a, a threat below 30, that, that one point actually does make quite a bit of difference. Um, you're going to end up seeing a threat be a lot less, well, threatening uh, for this strategy versus what you see in the starter deck. So let's, uh, 
Let's end our planning phase here. Attack in. Ooh, that's right. I was supposed to attack in order to exhaust, so that didn't. So that exact situation didn't happen. Sorry, folks. And we will work towards the objective. Zero willpower means we can't get anything out of our archer. That's all right. Um, I believe that uh, Legolas's shield was devoured in shadows. For people who are asking. Oh uh, yeah. So we um, we have changed some of the nomenclature for. Um, for Sauron's cards, um, Sauron's gonna have only his prep preparation cards are the uh, are the cards that he can play, just like our preparation cards. We've uh, kind of unified it because there was a little bit of some confusion, um, both internally and externally, over the different types of cards. Play out a guard enemy here. Um, yes, there is an ally cap, but I cannot remember what it, the number is on the top of my head. There's a there's a cap for how many characters you can have within your staging row. Um, yeah, so hopefully somebody uh, somebody can help me out with that, because um, I believe I have said it on stream before, but I'm not sure what the number is off the top of my head here. Um, let's play out Sneak Attack and grab a random ally, and I'm being informed it's seven, so you can have seven characters at a time, it looks like. Let's see what we've got. Oh, wow, I got Bjorn. I looked away just real quick uh, looking at chat when that played that, but here's Bjorn. Um, which we've talked about um, earlier. I think I've shown him in the deck builder as well. Um, he's quite a powerful ally and a good one to get off of uh, a good one to get off sneak attack. So he's going to gain one attack point for each uh, point below his maximum health. So every time he takes damage, he's going to get that much to his attack. Um, super, super powerful. Kind of similar to Gimli, kind of similar to Gimli in the uh, tabletop LCG as well. Um, we've changed him a little bit here though. Um, yeah, and uh, Bjorn is you know very powerful one of my favorite allies but in order to play of course at a cost of five it's very hard to uh to get him out into play but with sneak attack you don't really have to worry about that um so let's end our planning phase and let's have bjorn crash in here i lost to finish him off nobody expects the bear all right let's uh let's finish this off now i believe we have enough to ready up aragorn here and move on to the next location at 34 threat, which is pretty good. I'm pretty happy about that. And we'll travel. Yeah, these locations that you're seeing here, guys, these are also a work in progress, so things are going to continue to change. Um, the boards are going to continue to change, especially the visuals. Um, but yeah, feedback is definitely appreciated on all of those things, too. So let us know what you think of uh, different locations, where you're at with it, um, and things like that. Yeah. We move on to Ambush on the Shore here. We had some placeholder text there, and we jump in. Threat level shown up at the top. Oh, you can't see it because of the overlay currently. Let me uh, let me show you where it is at. So I've got my threat level and Sauron's resources up at the top right now. Um, currently being blocked by our logo. I think I'm gonna jump that over to the other side for the uh, for the new revision. I had revised this frame um, in order to uh, get rid of that blue line that we had running on the bottom. Um, but because of that, the blue line was over here. Because of that, we have it uh, up at the top here. So I'll uh, I'll have that corrected for next week's stream. Thanks for uh, thanks for letting me know. Let's see what we got. Let's have Legolas attack into the elite orcs here. We'll have Arwen heal up Aragorn. And I believe that this is the last location. So it's defeat the last enemy and play to complete the quest. So we've seen some kind of horde. Uh, Horde modes already where you have to defeat all the enemies in order to progress into the next location. Um, but usually that is not coupled with a, uh, a new an objective as well. So here you are going to have to defeat all the enemies in order to even touch that objective. Of course the exception to that be would be if you are uh, if you are playing spirit allies or spirit a uh, spirit hero, you're going to have a lot of cards that can place um, they can place progress on the objective without even having to touch it. Um, so that's one of the benefits of playing spirit, and you're going to see that within these kinds of locations too. If we play spirit heroes, we are uh, kind of able to move towards the objective without having to deal with uh, all these enemies that are in play in this final location. Our build right now is a little bit more combat focused, so we are going to try to take them all down since we have no ways to interact with an objective without questing. So let's see what we can do. I think it is time for faint. I think we're going to faint the elite orcs here because since they have surge, um, which was previously vigilant, and I believe was uh, we had a term for it before that as well. Um, it's currently known as Surge. Um, 
they get two attacks. So the first time that they attack, they do not exhaust. So let's see what we can do here. I'm going to hold both of my ranged um, allies in hand. Um, much of the time, I would play these out in order to just kind of bait Sauron into attacking. Um, here I'm going to hold them since we're so low on cards, we're kind of playing off the top of our deck and we've only got 14 left, so we're going to hold on. Yeah, Thank you, McDog, for the reminder. I am going to take out that sniper before anything else. Uh, let's end our planning phase and let's move into our attacks. But unfortunately, he has stealth, so we are not going to be able to do it until uh, until all of our these other enemies are exhausted. So actually, we wouldn't have even been able to make that play in that last location based on that. So let's see what we've got. All right, Aragorn, let's uh, let's finish off the elites while we've got the opportunity. Since we fainted them. Our wargs here are not going to exhaust because they also have Surge, so unfortunately we are not going to be able to get any advantage off attacking them with Legolas. So I'm actually just going to, uh, well normally I would take out the 2-2 in order to kill it, but because of Legolas's ability, we can attack the 2-3 and then take it down uh, at the start of the upkeep on the next round, so let's do that. And since they're exhausted, we're not going to receive the reciprocal damage. Much better. Much better move there. And we will end our adventuring phase. Our sniper deals the one damage. We move into upkeep. We draw our Bjorn. Now we can come out naturally. We don't have to worry about fleeting or anything like that. Uh, we will take down the uh, the Marauders. Use Arwen to heal up Aragorn, who's currently at six health. And go move into our planning phase. Oof, Mirkwood Patrol, three six guard. Yeah, you like those voice lines for Legolas? I'm a big fan as well. Um, just everything about this card's design is pretty great to me. Uh, but yeah. Let's uh, let's get Bjorn into play. Yeah, we pulled back the fog effect a little bit um, because we thought it was too strong. Uh, we are probably going to keep on messing with that and uh, getting it into a place where we're happy. So, you know, the, the back and forth of game development, this is the kind of stuff that happens when it's a work in progress. But yeah, um, we are continuing to play with effects like that. We've got Bjorn in play, we've got an archer that we could play, but we're not going to, and we'll end our planning phase and move into adventure. And subsequently combat. So I'm actually going to attack with Bjorn here um, in order to uh, get some damage on him and increase his attack a little bit. He's going to go up to a, uh, I believe a 5-3 after this attack, which will be enough to interact positively with anything on the board here if it tries to attack into him. Um... So it's kind of a win-win for us. I really wish we wouldn't have gotten Legolas exhausted there because I'd like to be able to put that damage over here. But until then, we'll just... Uh, that's an interesting pass from Sauron. We'll finish off... Uh, we'll finish off the guarded enemy there. I could ready up... Uh, could ready up Aragorn with his power. But then that would leave him at 2 health unless I attack into the warg which would leave him at three. And then two from this attack and one from the goblin sniper means he's dead. So I think I'm just gonna hold him back. Yeah, Quadlore, actually that is the plan. Um, keywords are going to start, uh, are going to be a little bit more visually popping. Um, they're also gonna have mouse over once we go into full release. So there's a couple of changes we're gonna be making to text box. Let's see what we've got. Legolas is going to use his ranged ability, I mean, excuse me, his upkeep ability to deal one. We'll deal one to the sniper and then we'll finish it off with the archer. So we can just ping twice here. There was probably an argument to be made for healing Bjorn, but uh, I think I'm just going to send him into this new sentinel enemy that Sauron just played, veteran patrol. All right, archer, finish off the other archer. Um, dealing damage effects on arrival or on upkeep is one of the ways that you can get around stealth pretty easily. Um, so it's good to have those within your deck. You don't really have to worry about stealth enemies as much once you're dealing direct damage instead because stealth only uh, only cares about attacking. It doesn't necessarily mean uh, you can't target that character with abilities. I think we can hold off. I'm pretty sure that we are going to make it through here. So I'm just going to play out the horseback archer. Yeah, it's another good way to get around um, guard too. Bjorn finishing off the uh, the veteran patrol here. An attack. We'll have the uh, archer kill them. 
the ward will trade with Bjorn, and we will have just enough to complete the quest by readying up Aragorn a second time and using him to quest again. And we have completed the uh, we have completed the quest pretty handily too, I would say. Like I said, that deck um, that deck is kind of a beating. Um, it's it's pretty powerful. It's one of my favorites that I've been playing personally. Um, yeah, allows you to uh, to move forward pretty quickly there. So let's uh, let's check our rewards. I was holding uh, quad. I was holding horseback archer back in my hand just in case something happened to the board or uh, Sauron played. Um, Sauron has a card that exhausts all damaged enemies. I kind of wanted something just in case, um, and there was no reason to keep flooding the board. Um, but in that last situation, since we were done anyway, I played him out. There definitely was an argument for playing him, though. Okay, so that was the uh, that was quest four. Kind of give you a quick look at where we're at with that in terms of its progress and kind of what it looks like. Um, there's some unique uh, some unique objectives in there, kind of focusing around combat. A couple of enemies like that hill troll, some more orcs. Um, a big horde of them come in, and we saw some new preparation cards. Uh, we didn't see Treacherous Fog, which uh, previously we didn't have integrated in the build. However, we did have the card in there, um, and that discards all events from a player's hand. That's one of those cards you're going to see uniquely within Quest 4, um, and you're going to see some other ones as well. Let's, um, let's jump into the decks, and let's take a look at some of the cards that are going to be new um, in Legolas's Hero Pack. So there's Legolas himself within the deck builder. You can already see some of the decks I've been playing around with over here on the side, um, including my 25 threat, two, uh, two tactics heroes, and one spirit hero, which um, I'm pretty interested in. Um, it basically just uh, uses these guys to clean up combat, Gimli and Legolas to clean up combat, and then has Frodo uh, Frodo move forward and, uh, and kind of complete the objective on his own. I actually had him at 8 willpower in one activation at one point to finish an entire... Uh, an entire location in one activation, which was pretty great. So, Bow of the Gladrim is the first one. Um, this is a uh, level 2 tactics legendary card um, that's going to be included in that pack, and it's an attachment. It's a weapon that's going to give you plus one attack and ambush. Um, ambush means that if you deal damage to an enemy when you have ambush um, and you kill that enemy, you're not going to receive reciprocal damage back. Um, so it kind of gives you some options, and obviously it's very powerful on uh, Legolas, who already has ranged. Um, once you give him ranged and ambush, there's uh, very rare situations where he's actually going to be dealing, uh, be dealt damage when he attacks first. Um, so as long as you get those activations in with uh, with Legolas, you can do a lot of damage with the bow. Of course, you have to play two tactics heroes in order to use it right now, um, which is pretty powerful. So here we are. Next up. We'll see. We've seen all these cards before. We've seen Gonberry Gun. We've seen Lembos, which are both um, Valor cards that we've revealed. Quicker Than Sight, though, is going to be the next new card that we haven't seen yet. It's a preparation card that, for one, a spear card that will destroy the next... Discard, excuse me, the next uh, attachment that Sauron plays. Um, so this is another one of those preparation cards that kind of interacts with Sauron before he, uh, before he puts his new attachments on, before he plays out cards. Um, pretty powerful. Um, kind of hard to use situationally. I found it's it's uh, you have to really know when to uh, when to play it, kind of anticipate his next move in order to uh, play it effectively. Um, but these cheap preparation cards, you know, you can really build a deck with like this and advance warning and some of the other ones that we haven't seen yet. Okay. Um, next up, we've got Sylvan Tracker here. So Sylvan Tracker, yeah. The other thing with Quicker Than Sight is that if you've got a uh, somebody pointed out in the chat here, it looks like uh, Lulzer, yeah. If you've got a quest with like specifically some really powerful attachments and you know that's coming up, you might want to pack this within your deck. Or if there's um, some objective that basically cares about those attachments as well. So here we are within uh, the deck builder and we're looking at Sylvan Tracker. So Sylvan Tracker we've seen, um, we saw him in that deck that we just played. Um, it's a lore ally. Sylvan, obviously, from the name. Um, with one attack, one willpower, and two defense um, for a cost of two, but it's, its powerful effect is its arrival. Like I said, the Sylvans all kind of have powerful arrival effects in order to maximize their uh, their synergy with tree people and some other effects like that. Um, I really like this ally. These two cost allies are very strong because you you uh, they don't take up your full turn, but they do give you a uh, a lot of uh, options when you play them. So yeah, I'm a big fan of Sylvan Tracker. Um, and I, I like that it's a little bit discounted, but I don't think it's I don't think it's like the most powerful card in the pack, but it's still very very good, especially for being com um, a common. So let's see what else we have. So we've seen uh, three of them so far, so we've got another one to show. 
and that's tree people which we've talked about previously i kind of alluded to it in my uh, last description um this is the rare within the pack and it's an event it's a leadership event for zero it's going to return a sylvan ally to your hand to play a random sylvan ally um and even on this page here you'll see even woodland courier is a sylvan ally it apl applies one progress when it arrives um so this is one of the cards you can get from the uh from using tree people the um yeah, currently, um, if it if it uh, hits a hard crash like that, I don't think it's a very powerful card. But if you get to uh, use it and integrate it, um, it's very powerful because it gives you that new ally. But actually, like like all these kinds of cards in CCGs, if you can figure out a way to uh, make its drawback into a uh, into a benefit instead, um, you see a huge huge boon to the card, and you can start doing some really broken things. I think Tree People is one of those engine cards that makes me very very excited. So yes. Um, for those asking, yeah, arrival is going to apply even if you don't play from hand. That's why we also get arrival effects off of sneak attack um, and off of tree people. Is that too powerful? Maybe. I guess we'll see. Um, but I think this is a, a very, very good card, and I'm really excited to see what kind of uh, engines we see out of it. The problem is, like, um, obviously you have to play leadership, uh, leadership for this. Many of the powerful Sylvans that I've seen in the core set or um, in that initial... Um, that initial grouping of cards are actually within the spirit sphere so i myself would really like to combine those two spheres when i'm playing this and then in order to maximize that value i also want to play one tactics hero so that i can uh so that i can play goudhorn archer which i think using that that one damage effect is one of the more broken things that you can do with tree people so um in my uh in my opinion i kind of think that like you want to play like like the best home for this deck for this card would be like a leadership spirit tactics deck um and i'm not sure what that looks like i'm not sure what that looks like without healing from lore so uh putting something together powerfully with that uh that uses this card is going to be very interesting and i'm, I'm super excited to see what everybody thinks of once they get their hands on the game um later on in quarter one 2018. So that's what I had planned for today's stream. Um, so we're going to be wrapping up now. Thanks again for joining us. As always, you can find us on socials. You can find us on Twitter at FFI underscore games. You can find us here on twitch.tv slash FFI games. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash FFI games. Um, you can join us in the Steam community. We've been having some really good conversations. Uh, there's been a lot of feedback based on some... Uh, some changes to scale, some changes to uh, threat, which we are all listening to. We are talking about quite a bit. Um, yeah, super excited to show you guys some more stuff. Um, there were some card changes there that I'm sure some people spotted within the deck builder too. Hopefully we'll be able to go into more detail on those on Thursday. Um, Thursday, I've got another deck using uh, Legolas and Gimli. We, uh, we talked about it a little bit just now in the uh, deck builder. I'm going to be showing that um, two tactics and one spirit hero, uh, spirit hero deck in order to kind of see how that gets through that quest and see if we can go. Um, with no healing cards, it's been some. Uh, there's been some challenges playing that deck, but uh, I'm very excited to show it on stream here. So yeah, thanks again for joining us, guys. Find us on socials. Um, check out some of the, our old archive streams. Um, I've uploaded our first stream to the VOD. Uh, there should be one coming up either today or tomorrow as well. I'm in the process of editing that, so you'll be starting to see those too. Um, that's going to be the Caleb stream, which I thought was uh, important one to get uploaded as quick as possible because that's a very good conversation that we had with him about the game. So yeah, thanks for joining us. Hi, to, hi again to chat. Um, we will see you on Thursday and have a good week until then. Thanks guys. Bye.